various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so much you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you are also called in one body, and be thankful. The word of Christ dwell in you richly, and in, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through Him. The word of the Lord. And any of you who are a bit teachers might know that as you see a lot of students pass through your lives, a few of them stay in your heart. And that's what happened. Thomas and I have been friends for about 10 years, I think. Uh, and stay in touch, even though our lives are gone different places. I'm, and I'm only getting to know you, but I'm impressed with your taste in husbands. <laughs> and I hope that you and I will be great friends as the years unfold. When we think of God, we can think of lots of different things, but since God is enormous and beyond any one uh, uh, concept. Jesus, we believe, comes to the earth and Christmas is coming, we're already about to start celebrating the miracle of God saying, I love you so much, I don't want to just lord over you, I want to become one of you. And then once he was with us, they kept asking about him about commandments and, and religious things. They called him Lord and teacher, and he said, those are both correct, but I really love it when you call me friend. Would you call me friend? Can you all call God a friend, or does that seem too irreverent, audacious? Not if you're invited. Not if God says, I'd like you to be my friend. Could we be friends? At the beginning of John's Gospel, there's already been three other Gospels written. Matthew, Mark, and Luke already exist. And John comes along, and instead of kind of repeating what's already been said, he takes it all in a different direction. He starts with a poem about the cosmos. The beginning is the word of God, and the word that gave the flesh and the promises. And then he, he tells a story that gets told nowhere else in any of the other gospels, that story about a wedding. Because he wants you to be thinking matrimonially when you think of the person of Jesus. Because he's not just going to be any kind of friend, but this kind of friend. The good times are bad, sickness and health, the whole shebang. You told me only a little while ago, I didn't know the, the uh, proposal story, but apparently he took you out to a nice restaurant under the Bay Bridge, looking at the lights and having a nice meal. Did you 
you see it coming, or was it a surprise? A little bit both. <laughs> but apparently, at some point in the meal, he gets down on one knee and asks, would you marry me? Can you imagine God getting down on one knee and saying to you, would you marry me? that. Can you imagine the creator of the entire universe loving you so specifically as to say, would you marry me? That's essentially the heart of the gospel of John. He ends up saying, but at the beginning, you know, there's big important people coming. John the Baptist is preaching and he's, um, he's getting people all fired up to the way of the Lord, and then Jesus walks into the scene and takes his breath away. He stops in mid sentence practically, and all he can manage to do is say, That one, follow that one. You've had moments, haven't you, where the other one took your breath away? <laughs> and you're not sure. <laughs> John the Baptist. Jesus takes his breath away. He's in the presence of something awesome and loving and deep, and all he can barely do is point and say, follow him. And people start following him. And some of them, John the Baptist, his name is Baptizer, and some of his followers come to him and say, that guy, that guy that you told us to follow, he's baptizing now. Like, he's doing your shit. You're losing market share. People are going over to him. And I love this line. John answers, No one can receive anything except when it's been given to them from heaven. You yourselves, your witnesses that I told you I'm not the Messiah, I've just been, I'm the one that's been sent ahead of him to prepare the way. Alex, where are you? Would you stand for just a second? Face the people, would you? Here's what John the Baptist says. It's the bride who it, the, it's the bridegroom who gets the bride. But the friend of the bridegroom, the best man, who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. I am the best man, and for this reason, my joy is complete. Thanks. <laughs> In their wedding custom, it was the best man that took the bride those last few steps and did that little transfer and hands the bride the bride. And John the Baptist says, that's my job and I get to do it for the whole human race. I get to bring everybody to the spouse. I love that word in English, bridegroom. It's bigger than, any, than one gender. It's God wanting to be the spouse of every person. And from this day forward, your job is to enflesh that reality for your spouse, for your bride, for your groom. What a high calling. I promise my prayer for you is all that stuff about good times and bad things sound that's as hard. Whatever the most difficult day in your future is, remember that Father Nathan prayed for you on your wedding day for that day, kind of banging a prayer so you can draw on it when you need it. Well, I love you and I'm excited to be in this spot, but the most important words that get spoken at a wedding are certainly not the ones that come out of the mouth of the preacher. They come from the hearts and the lips of a bride and groom. And we're eager to hear that profession of your vows.
love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your life. We will. We accept children lovely from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church. We will. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, to face each other, join your hands and declare your consent before God. Thank you, Hiwana, to be my mom. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I hey, Hiwana. Thank you, Thomas. Take you, Thomas. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. <laughs> in sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen your consent and bring fulfillment of his blessings within you. And when God has joined, let no one put asunder, and let the church say, Amen. Amen.
and Her Majesty Queen Nana's power, and the rest of the royal household, that they may continue to be blessed with divine knowledge and grace in leading both country and people. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For Hermana and Thomas, for their prosperity and well-being as a family, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For their relatives and friends, for all who have assisted this couple, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We ask God's blessing on our every attempt to move from being apart from each other to being a part of one human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For each of us present here today, inspired by Thomas and Mana's exchange of marriage vows, may we recommit ourselves more deeply to all the many relationships in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord. On this day of the dead and feast of all souls, we ask God's blessing on all who have died. May each one of receptive be receptive to God's healing grace and grow in their capacity to love. We pray to the Lord. Lord in a moment of silence, let's present to God our deepest needs for this couple, for our families, for all. Who created men and women in your own image? and will that the, their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly ask you, for these, your servants, who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony, that your abundant blessing, Lord, may come upon this bride and upon her companion for life. May the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony they may adorn their family with children and enrich your world with their love. In happiness, may they praise you, Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil. And always know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the Holy Assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surround them, may they come at last to the kingdom of heaven. For we ask for this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God the Almighty Father grant you his joy and bless you in all your children. Together, amen. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion and good time for Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now what I invite you after the wedding and after the wedding couple and proud party is left to go out into the quad. Uh, and then to re truly, truly rejoice this whole day, day after day. So I think this is a day which should be marked by joy.